Well, that was a good sound for both the tree and me. It meant that I made a good, clean pruning cut on this tree that'll heal quickly when it's done at the right time of year and with the right tool. And the tool that I'm using is a pair of bypass hand shears. With bypass shears, the blades pass by each other as they cut through the branch, like a pair of scissors. If the blades are sharp, these shears make a nice, smooth cut. A good pair of hand shears is probably the first pruning tool a new gardener should purchase. And be sure to buy one that fits your hand and can be taken apart to sharpen an oil. Hand shears like these are great for pruning your trees and shrubs and removing unwanted shoots and branches that are small, half inch in diameter or less. On smaller branches, place the hook on top of the branch and the blade just below it, right outside the branch collar. Now the collar is this bulge that connects the branch to the tree. And by pruning here, you'll get a clean cut that'll heal quickly. Another kind of shears is the anvil type. Anvil shears work like a knife on a cutting board. The blade closes onto a flat piece called the anvil. The blade on a pair of anvil shears is ground to form a wedge or a sharp point. Bypass shears tend to be better for cutting through soft stems of herbaceous perennials and annuals and small green branches. Anvil shears have a definite advantage over bypass when it comes to large woody stems. Bypass shears are used for branches and stems that are less than half inch in diameter. Anvil shears will easily cut through woody branches as large as three quarters of an inch. And because of their differences, you may want to have a pair of each for various pruning jobs. If you use your hand shears only for light pruning and you take proper care of them, store them in a dry place, a good pair of hand shears should work well and last for years. Shears are great for light, small pruning, but as your trees and shrubs grow, you'll need a larger, stronger tool. Loppers are used for cutting branches that are up to an inch in diameter, and the pruning blade comes in the same types as shears, bypass and anvil. This anvil-type lopper opens wider than a bypass lopper does, and sharp blade cuts quickly and cleanly through the branch with very little effort. When buying a bypass lopper, select one that has a rubber bumper guard that softens the force as you cut through a branch. Well, this bumper makes it easier on your arm muscles when you've got a lot of pruning to do. Well, these tools are great when you're pruning limbs and branches that are within reach. What about those that are up higher in a tree? Well, the answer to that is a pole pruner. It's actually loppers on a pole. It allows you to reach high into a tree, and a pull cord controls the blade. Place the blade around the branch, close to the collar, and then pull the cord to cut through the branch, and then watch out below. Eventually, you'll need a pruning tool to remove large broken limbs or low-hanging branches that are too big for a lopper. Now, there are many sizes and types of pruning saws that are available. Notice that the teeth on this saw are not vertical, but slope back. This is called the kerf. The angled teeth found on most pruning saws reduces friction and pinching on the blade by making the cutting surface wider than the top of the blade. Another characteristic of a pruning saw is the curved blade. This blade cuts on the pull stroke. When sawing above chest height, it uses your body weight to stabilize your cutting hand. This saw works well, but it isn't very convenient to carry around the yard or the orchard. If you've got a lot of pruning to do in different locations, a folding saw may be your best choice. The blade folds into the handle for easy storing and carrying, and locks into position when it's ready to use. The best time of year to prune many deciduous trees is in the spring, before they've leafed out. Then you can see the branches and where they need to be pruned. When it comes to flowering shrubs, consider when they bloom. If that's in the spring, then prune them after they've flowered. And if they bloom in summer or fall, prune them in the spring. If you'd like more information on pruning tools, visit our website at bhg.com or on AOL using the keyword BHG.